friends, I'm Nurse Sarah. And I'm Nurse Jordan. We're here today and we are gonna give you Med Ed. We miss seeing you all in person, um, but we are so excited knowing that you are at home watching us. We cannot wait to share what we have. You all have been to camp before, and if you have not, then you're in for a treat. But if you have been to camp before, this is my special bone. Jordan, do you remember what's in my special bone? I do. You do. Okay, let's see how good Nurse Jordan is. Okay, my first friend, and I'll let you hold him. You can hold it up for my friends. It's red in color. Does anyone know what this is? Nurse Jordan. I know what this is. What is it? It's a red blood cell. A red blood cell. Do you know what red blood cells carry around your body? I do. <gasps> what? Oxygen. Oxygen. Okay, friends, so red blood cells. These are the ones that carry oxygen all around your body. Good job. Next one. It's white in color. Do you remember, friends, what this one is? Hmm, it's very similar to the last one in the name. Just the first word is different, and it's kind of like this color. Nurse Jordan, do you want to help our friends out? I do. This is a white blood cell. What do our white blood cells do? Do you remember? They help us fight infection. They do help us fight infection. We need to keep these little friends around. Okay, last but not least, what we find in our bone, which is called our bone marrow, it's yellow. It's kind of odd shape, but these are really, really important. It starts with the letter P, and whenever I cut myself and I start bleeding, they run really, really, really fast, and they get all their other friends, and they're saying, hey, come help me, come help me, come to my cut. What are they called? I know what these are called. What are they called? They're platelets. They're platelets. They are platelets. So friends, whenever you think of your scab and when you cut yourself and you look down, you're saying, oh my gosh, my, look, what, uh, look what my platelets have done. They've hurried up so fast and they've helped me from stop bleeding. So just to recap, we have our red blood cells carry oxygen through our body. White blood cells help fight infection. And then our platelets they're our first responders to any cut, and they help patch up our cuts. Okay, good job, friends. Okay, I'm gonna keep that here so you all can see it on my table. All right, next, I would like to go through some fun questions, and I'm gonna have my friend here, Nurse Jordan, help me out. Are you ready, Nurse Jordan? I think I'm ready. <laughs> okay. First question. Oh, this is a tricky one. Uh-oh. What does a nurse do? Oh, goodness. A nurse does a lot of things. We administer medication that helps you to get better. Mm -hmm. We take your vital signs to make sure that all of your organs are working good. We listen to your heart and to your lungs, make sure it's beating loud, make sure you're breathing well. Um, and we also do things to help you feel better, like we sit on your bed and we talk to you. We give you medicine when you're hurting. Great, I couldn't have said it better myself. Next question, what does a doctor do? Oh goodness, a doctor is a little bit different than a nurse, so the medications that nurses give, the doctors order. So they have gone to a long time of school and they learn which medications are the best for you. And they help with the treatment and the plan of care for you guys. They come in, they spend time with you, they listen to your heart as well, they listen to your lungs, they see if anything is wrong, and then they develop a plan to get you better. And then the nurse comes in and she carries out that plan. It's just teamwork. Teamwork is dream work. Okay. Okay, Miss Nurse Jordan, can you please name two good things about going to the clinic? Whenever you go to the clinic, what are some two good things about going to the clinic? Well, the first good thing about going to the clinic is you probably get to see one of your favorite nurses or doctors. Um, if you're lucky, you might get to see one of our therapy dogs. 
Um, the next good thing about going to the clinic is if there's something wrong, you need to go into the clinic so that we can look you over, we can listen to your heart and lungs, we can take your vital signs, we can see if something's wrong, and we can get you treatment to get you better. It's perfect. Look at her. Okay, this is a tough one. What are two bad things that, because we obviously know going to clinic is really, it can be really good, but there's some hard things about going to clinic too. What are, what are some bad, not so fun things about when you go to clinic? So some maybe not so fun things about going to clinic is you may have never been to clinic before. So it might be unknown territory. It might be a little scary to go into a room and have a doctor come in and put this stethoscope on you and put a little arm hug on you and take your temperature. Um, so it can be scary, maybe things that you've never experienced before. The other scary thing that could happen at clinic is you might have to get a poke so that we can draw your blood, we can send it to the lab, and we can see if there's anything bad going on so that we can get you better. That was great. Why would you, why would you ever have to go back to the clinic? Like, why do you have to go to the clinic? Like, I'm feeling fine. Why am I having to go to the clinic? So you might have to go back to the clinic because we like to check on your blood counts. So when we do your poke and we send your levels to the, or your blood to the lab, we like to look at it and make sure everything looks good. And sometimes if things don't look good, then you might need to get some platelets. Yay! Or our you platelet. might need to get some blood. If your red blood cells are low or your platelets are low, we might need to give you those. So even though you might be feeling good inside your body, they might still be low. Right. I think we already covered that one. Ooh, this is a really good one. What is an IV? Just two letters. Ooh. IV, do you know, it's kind of tricky. What's an IV? So an IV, if you've never had one before, is a very small little catheter. It kind of looks like a straw. And what they do is they actually do put a little needle and it is a poke and then they feed the little straw into your blood vessel. And then that's how we can give you medicine. But the needle comes out and only the little straw piece stays in. And then the nurses watch it and they make sure it looks good and we can give you medicine through there to make you feel better. So the needle doesn't stay in there because I get really scared sometimes because I, I, I worry that the, the needle's still in there because it hurt really bad. I promise you the needle okay. does not stay in. It might hurt, it might be a little sore. Sometimes we can give you a hot pack to help with that. Okay. But I promise the needle comes out. Okay, that's always scary. I always have to ask. Okay. Is there anything other than medicine that can help us with our pain? Absolutely. I know that when I'm at home and I'm in pain and maybe I don't want to take medicine, I sometimes will put like a hot pack on my head or maybe a cold pack. Um, I like to deep breathe, take in deep breath, blow it out. I like to close my eyes and maybe pretend like I'm at the beach. Um, or I like to listen to music. Those things all help me with pain that's not taking medicine. Oh, that's great. Oh, this is a really good question. Nurse Jordan, what does a child life specialist do? Oh, goodness. We would be here all day if I listed everything that a child so life specialist true. does. So child life specialists are wonderful. They come in and they help you to feel comfortable with uncomfortable situations, such as if you have to get an IV or you have to take a medicine that tastes bad. They come in, they help explain things. Um, they make you feel better and understand why we have to do things that aren't, that we don't always want to do. And if you're lucky, they'll bring a dog with them too, mm. like Chanel. And she can come help too. She can get up on your bed, you can pet her, you can help relax before a procedure that you're nervous about. That sounds really fun. I love dogs. What are the words, what do these words mean? Side effects. I've heard that a lot and whenever a doctor or nurse asks me what side effects mean, I don't always know what they're talking about. Side effects can be tricky. So a side effect happens because you got a certain medication. So with chemotherapy, a side effect of getting that medication might be that your hair falls out, or it might be that you get nauseous and you throw up. 
So we have to give you this medicine because it's what makes you feel better and it gets you healthy, but sometimes not so comfortable things happen because of it. But the good thing is, is we have medication to help with that, or we can use our non-medication techniques such as heat and cold packs. We can deep breathe. We can listen to music. Play with the puppies. Yes, <laughs> we can play on our iPad. We Love have it. lots of options to help with the side effects of medication. Okay, great. <gasps> this is just quizzing Nurse Jordan of uh -oh. what we talked about earlier. Nurse Jordan, what cells fight infection? <laughs> Oh goodness, I have to put my thinking cap on. Think really hard, friends. Do you know what it is? It's in you the bone. You do? Right? Okay, let's it's see if bone. Nurse Jordan does. Yes, it's in the bone. Okay, I think I remember. It's the white blood cell. Yes, good job. It's the white blood cell. Excellent. Okay, can you now remember and name all three of them? Just the names of them, because they do have tricky names. Friends at home, can you name all three? Good I think job. They did it. They did it. Now, can you do it? Okay, let me see. This little yellow guy, I remember he helps stop bleeding. He does. He's a platelet. Yes, good job. And I remember this red guy, he carries oxygen through my body. He's a red blood cell. Great. And last, I know this one since you, you just talked asked about me. it. <laughs> this is a white blood cell and he helps fight infection. And they all work together like a big team. Perfect. Okay, this is kind of a hard, tough question to ask. Oh, no. When you're sad, what can make you happier? Because it's, I mean, we all get sad. I get sad. I'm sure Nurse Jordan can get sad. At home, I'm sure you can get sad. We all get sad, and it's okay to be sad, but we need to find things to help us make us happier. So, Nurse Jordan, what, what makes you happier when you're sad? So when I'm sad, um, I like to play with my dog, Calvin. <laughs> He's a black lab. He has a lot of energy. So we like to go outside and play ball. Um, I also like to sit outside and just kind of feel the sunshine if I get sad. Um, a lot of times I like to call up my friend Sarah and just talk to her and she can make me feel better. Um, what else do I do when I'm sad? Um, I might sit down and think about things that make me happy. Mm -hmm. I might make a list and then I see when I can do those things, such as go outside and play with my dog, um, when I could take maybe a bubble bath, <laughs> um, when I could just listen to some calming music, when I could call my friend Sarah to help me. Um, those are all things that I do um, when I'm sad. Do you want to know what I like to do when I'm sad? Of course. I like to bake. I love oh. baking. I love baking cookies and cakes and pies. It's just something about baking and then I can give them away to my friends. So there's tons of things. Just think about it. Ask whoever, your friends. Just think about what makes you happy. Okay. What whenever you're feeling sick? So not necessarily sad, but when you're feeling really sick, are there certain things that you can turn to that you remember that can make you feel better? Yes, so when I'm sick, maybe I'm sick to my tummy or I'm not feeling good. Um, a lot of times I like to take a nap. I like to just That's rest. I like to turn the ceiling fan on, yeah. close the blinds, maybe turn on some music Very and nice. just lay my head down and take a nap. Um, sometimes I like to honestly just play a game, maybe on my iPad, just something calming. Um, sometimes if I don't feel good, I like to do something that will distract me. So I like to put a puzzle together, um, or sometimes I even like to play with my dog if I'm still not feeling great, um, but I need something to distract me from my tummy hurting. Those are great examples. What helps you relax when you're feeling scared or afraid? So let's say that tomorrow is when you're going to clinic and you know that you're getting a poke tomorrow and you're feeling really, really anxious and nervous about it. Is there anything that can help you just kind of relax and calm down? 
Yes, so I like to relax when I'm nervous about something by talking about it. So I would maybe sit down with my mom or my dad or even my brother or sister, and I would talk about it. I would talk about how I feel. I would talk about why I'm nervous, and then I would listen to what they have to say. Um, I also like to do my deep breathing, so I breathe in and I breathe out a couple of times and I just kind of stay relaxed. But the most important thing for me is to talk about it with somebody that I trust, like my mom or my dad, or even my nurse, Sarah. Great. <gasps> okay, this is about camp friends. And once again, Nurse Jordan and I are just so sad that we can't be at camp together. We know we will in the future sometime, but we can't this year. If you have been to camp, my camper friends, what is your favorite part about camp? What is one of your favorite memories that you have at camp? And I'm gonna ask Nurse Jordan to give me, let's give her a couple, cause let's be real, there's like several things at camp that are probably our favorite. I can name like 20. So let's have Nurse Jordan share just a couple of her favorite things about camp. This is a tough one. <laughs> I've been to camp since 2010. So this year would have been my 10th, 10th wow. year to be there. So I have a lot of really great memories. Um, two that I wanna share with you are the first one um, that I remember and I will remember forever is there was a little girl at camp and she was afraid um, to go down the big swing, the mm. zip line. That's scary. And, um, she was sitting up there at the top and she was doing her deep breathing. You could tell she was really trying to relax because she was nervous. Um, and I actually had a camper down with me on the ground and we were cheering her on and we were clapping for her. And this little camper next to me, she was only about six or seven, started cheering really loud. And Aww. she was calling this girl's name and telling her, you can do it, I believe in you, you're strong. And then down the zip line she went. <gasps> that and so is so it was, awesome. It was really great to see that your friends can help you in situations when you're uncomfortable or you're nervous. So I was really proud of both of those campers. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is, so I'm a nurse at camp in the med hut. And so kiddos come when they need their medicine. And sometimes we don't like to take medicine. Um, sometimes it doesn't taste good. And I'm at camp, the last thing I wanna do is go in and take my medicine. Right, they wanna go swimming, they wanna go to boats, they wanna go to pottery. So they don't wanna have to come in and take their medicine. But one of the coolest things I've seen happen at camp is on Sunday night when they get there, I've seen a camp, several campers that don't wanna take their medicine. They're, it's really hard for them to swallow it. Um, it doesn't taste good. It may take them a long time to take it but then every day they get better and better and better. And then by Friday morning, they run in, they take their medicine and they're gone. That's so cool. So they really worked to overcome their fear of taking their medicine throughout the week. And camp really helps. They watch their other friends take their medicine and they're I a love great that. support for them. That's, that's awesome. That's one of my favorite memories of I camp. love that. I think one of my favorite memories is fishing because when I was little, I. I was scared of fishing. I was scared of, well, the fish, right? Whenever you actually pull them up out of the water, it just kind of, so the, the cool thing about camp is they make it so fun. And do you remember, Jordan, what they put on the hooks to get the fish? Oh, yes, I hate that part, it's worms. <laughs> it's Who worms. wants to touch a worm? I know. Oh. And sometimes if you're lucky, guess what else you can put on the hook? A hot dog. A hot dog. I always tried to Isn't find the that hot dog. crazy? Mm -hmm. Who would have thought that fish like, I mean, I like hot dogs, so I can't blame the fish. <laughs> okay, so this is for you at home campers too. I really want you to think about it. If you have never been to camp before, think about it. What are, what are some of the things that you're most excited about? Have you ever been away to camp before? Have you, you know, ever stayed the night somewhere else? Have you been fishing? Have you been horseback riding? Have you done pottery? Have you done arts and crafts? All these fun things that we have at camp. Think about in the future, some of the things that you would be most excited about doing um, whenever you have the opportunity to do it in person. Okay. Oh, this is a really good, so these are some of our, um, I like to call them safety questions. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, I gotta put my safety hat on. Okay, safety hat. Does everyone have their safety hat on at home? Okay, good. 
Okay, here is a great safety question that I have for Nurse Jordan. Ooh, how do you know when to use hand sanitizer or soap and water? Because, you know, I'm told that they both clean my hands, so I get so confused when I'm supposed to use hand sanitizer, Jordan, and when I'm supposed to use soap and water. Can you help me with that? Yes, I get confused too, so okay. that's a great question. And I'm sure at home you get confused too, so let's clarify for you. Great. So let's say you're outside and maybe your, your hands get muddy or they get dirty and they have stuff on them. You want to go inside and you want to wash that off your hands. Oh. You want to use soap and water and you want to wash for 20 seconds. 20 seconds? You want to make sure you get the top. How will I remember 20 seconds? Great question. <gasps> you can sing the happy birthday song. Oh my gosh, I three love that times. Song. And it and we want to make sure that you wash the palms of your hands, okay. the tops of your hands, okay. and in between your fingers. Oh, okay. Now, if you didn't have anything on your hands, but you were you were needing to wash your you wanted to clean your hands. Mm -hmm. Um, then you could use hand gel. So you want to use two pumps. You want to do the same thing. You want to make sure you get it on the palms of your hands, the back of your hands, and in between your fingers, and then you let it dry. That's so great. I just wasn't ever sure, and it gets really tricky figuring out which one to use. So thank you so much for helping me with that. I will say, too, it is a really good idea to wash your hands with soap and water after you use the restroom, oh. after you blow your nose or maybe you touch your face, and before you eat, because you really want to make sure you get all of those germs off of there. I, that's great. I mean, sometimes we just don't think about it, so maybe we should just wash our hands if we think about it and clean them. Like if you see hand sanitizer, I wonder when the last time that I clean my hands, maybe it's a good opportunity or time for me to do some hand sanitizer. That's great. All right, next question. Oh, this is a great one. <laughs> Nurse Jordan, when should I brush my teeth? Just right before I go to bed, right? Oh no, your oh. dentist will not be happy with that. Shucks. You need to brush your teeth in the morning. <sighs> because you probably slept maybe with your mouth open at night and you're breathing that. in air. And so we just need to clean those teeth. Okay. And then you definitely want to brush your teeth before going to bed because you've eaten food, you've drank drinks all day long, and all of that stuff will sit on your teeth and that can cause cavities. <gasps> What's a cavity? Oh goodness, it's when you get bacteria in your teeth and you have to go to the dentist and he has to clean it out. Okay. So you definitely want to make sure you're brushing your teeth brushing twice teeth. a okay. day. Twice a day. Okay, I can do that. Great. Oh, what is one of the most important things that we can do to prevent germs or prevent the spread of infection? I know this answer. What is it? Wash your hands. Yay! <laughs> and now we know how to wash our hands, what types we can do that. Okay, some other safety questions. Should I run around a swimming pool? No, you should not. What if you were to slip and fall? Oh, that's right. Hit your head or fall in the water? Because I guess some kids could have gotten out of the pool and it was wet. Yes. And maybe it makes it a little slippery. You never want to run around water. Okay. Um, should I go swimming with or without an adult around? Because I feel comfortable swimming. You should always, always, always swim with an adult around. Okay. Even though you're very comfortable with swimming, accidents happen and you want to be able to have an adult there to help you if needed. Okay. This is a really question that I get confused sometimes. If I have to cough or sneeze, what body part should I do it? Should I do my hand? Oh goodness, no. Oh, should I do just up in the air away from someone? Oh, please, no. Okay, where should I cough or sneeze? So if you don't have a tissue, you always want to cough and sneeze into your elbow crease like this. Oh, my <laughs> elbow. I remember yes. someone told me that one time. Okay. And even though you're coughing into your elbow, if you can then get somewhere and wash your hands and maybe wash your elbow, um, that would be a good idea but we don't want to sneeze out into the open because the little particles can go and I could sneeze here and it could fall on my nurse there. What if I don't see anything? It doesn't mean it's not there. Oh, so they're there without me seeing them? Yes. <gasps> when you sneeze, your sneeze can go up to 50 feet. So that's really that's far. That's like a lot of me because I'm five feet. Yes, that would be like 10 of you laid out. Oh That's how far it could go. That's so pretty always crazy. Always make sure you cough or sneeze in your elbow if you don't have a tissue. Man. Okay, so this is the last one that I'm gonna talk about for safety questions. If 
I'm riding a bike and I have my helmet on and it is, I'm in Texas and it is so hot outside. Can I just take it off and, and just keep riding? Or do I need to take it off and rest and wait? I love riding my bike. Me too. But there's a few things you should know if you're gonna ride your bike, okay? Number one, you should always have a helmet on. Okay. And you wanna make sure that your helmet comes under your chin, buckles, and fits tightly. Okay. Next is you wanna make sure that you're always wearing closed-toed shoes. Oh. Because if your, toe, if your foot falls down, you don't wanna scrape your toe. Okay. Third, if you need to stop and rest, you can take your helmet off, but if you're gonna get back on your bike and ride, you need to put your helmet back on. What if I'm just going a short distance? It doesn't matter. Oh. Even if you're just riding up and down the driveway, you wanna make sure if you're on a bicycle, you are always wearing a helmet that fits securely. Okay. Well, thank you, Nurse Jordan. This you're was so, so fun. And we miss you all. And even though you're not at camp this summer, you're camping at home. We're camping at our homes, thinking of you all. And we miss you. Do you yes. have anything else you want to say? We hope you have a great summer. Stay happy, stay healthy, yes. stay hydrated. Yes. So make sure you're washing your hands often. Make sure you're drinking a lot of water. And if you're outside, make sure you're wearing your sunscreen. sunscreen. Yes. We hope you guys have a great school year and we hope to see you at camp next summer. We miss and love you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.